On this mission, we will learn how to do a realistic carrier cold start on the Boeing T-45C aircraft created by Virtual Naval Air Operations, for DCS, following the procedures of the NATOPS flight manual of the real aircraft. The step numbers, when provided, corresponds to those of the NATOPS manual, and are provided to allow future reference to it. Even though most of the steps of the interior inspection are already preset on DCS, they are still shown to provide cockpit familiarization to the new pilot. We will skip the steps of the cold start procedure, that corresponds to items not simulated yet, or that can't be performed on DCS. You will be given the option to skip checks and steps that are non-essential on DCS. The carrier cold start procedure includes the following sections. Interior checks. Pre-start checks. Starting the engine. Post-start checklist. Final check with plane captain. Please, be aware that you can press spacebar to interrupt long texts. Press backspace if you want to perform all the steps of the cold start procedure, including the interior check section, and the functional checks of the later sections. If you have selected to perform all the steps of the procedure, including all checks, 3. Parking brake. We will engage it so that the aircraft doesn't move once we start the engine. Click on the parking brake handle, so that it fully extends and rotates clockwise. 7. Engine switch. Set to on, with a left click. Don't do a right click, as that would advance the switch into the start momentary position, which will be used later, when we are starting the engine. The on position, energizes the engine start control unit and permits fuel boost pump operation. A left click toggles the switch between off and on. 8. Rudder trim knob. Confirm that it's at neutral position. Rotating the knob left or right adds the corresponding rudder trim. The rudder trim indicator is located forward of the throttle and shows the rudder trim position. 12. Throttle. Check it's at its off position, towards the back. The throttle controls the engine thrust in response to the throttle movement. On the sim, the throttle has 3 to 10 positions. Full forward. Operates engine at maximum rated thrust. Idle. Opens fuel shutoff valve to direct fuel to the engine. Off. Interrupts fuel flow to the engine. The highlighted control is the throttle finger lift. It allows you to move the throttle from off to idle and vice versa. You can use the mouse to click on it, or press the home key instead. You can try this finger lift control now, and thus move the throttle over its complete range but please leave it on the off position before continuing on to the next checklist item. 13. Exterior Lights Master Switch. Located on the throttle grip, set is required. As we don't have electric power yet the switch does not have an immediate effect. 14. Flaps Slats Lever. Confirm that they are up. The flaps lever has positive detents for each of the following three positions. Up. Selects the flaps up and the slats retracted. One half. Selects half flaps and the slats extended. Down. Selects full flaps and the slats extended. On DCS, right click to move down, left click to move up. Currently, only the front cockpit can click on the flap lever. 15. Anti-skid switch. Set to on. On this aircraft, the wheel brakes are equipped with an electrically controlled anti-skid system. Use of anti-skid minimizes tire skid damage, and stopping distances are reduced under all runway surface conditions. The system is enabled by placing the anti-skid switch on both cockpits in the on position. This illuminates the skid advisory line in each cockpit. 16. Emergency flap switch. Confirm it is set to norm. In the event a hydraulic system failure prevents normal flaps used during landing, the flaps can also be extended with pressure from the wheel brake emergency accumulator. Emergency extension is controlled by this emergency flap switch. Use of the emergency flap extension system overrides the normal system and drives the flaps to full down. The slats are not operated by this emergency switch. With normal hydraulic pressure restored, the flaps can be raised normally following emergency extension. 17. Launch bar switch. Check it as it retract. The launch bar is used to transmit launch loads from the catapult shuttle to the aircraft structure. During a carrier launch, this switch extends or retracts the launch bar. A green L-bar advisory light will illuminate when the bar is extended. 18. Emergency gear handle. Confirm it is at its in position. If the landing gear, due to a malfunction, can't be extended with the landing gear handle, 
rotating this handle clockwise and then pulling, opens the landing gear doors and extends the landing gear by gravity. In the event of an actual emergency gear extension, the normal landing gear handle should be placed in the down position, before pulling the emergency gear handle. When a safe gear indication is achieved, the emergency gear handle should remain out and the aircraft should be landed as soon as practicable. 19. Landing gear handle. Check it's down. Normal retraction and extension of the main landing gear is provided by dedicated hydraulic actuators powered by the hydraulic system 1. Emergency extension is accomplished via gravity using the emergency gear handle. If the landing gear handle is set to up with weight on wheels, the gear will not retract. Three green landing gear position indicator lights and one amber gear door indicator light are located above the landing gear handle in each cockpit. Each green indicator light is illuminated only when its respective landing gear is down and locked. The door light is illuminated whenever the landing gear doors are not up and locked. 20. Master arm switch. Confirm it is at safe. For safety, all armament circuits are controlled by this master armament switch, with the exception of emergency jettisoning of external stores. With the master armament switch in the master arm position, the armament circuits are energized, and the master armament red indicator light, labeled master arm is illuminated on the aft cockpit for the instructor to see. 22. Standby flight instruments. Set and check. The main flight instruments are the HUD and the ADI page of the multifunction displays. The analog instruments are for emergency use when the HUD or MFD are not operative. A. Standby vertical speed indicator. Check it is at zero. The vertical speed indicator senses rates of change in the atmospheric pressure, to give a visual presentation of ascent or descent, from zero to 6,000 feet per minute. B. Standby Attitude Indicator. Check. This indicator is a self-contained electrically driven gyro horizon type instrument. The gyro is powered by the 28 volts DC Essential Services bus. An off flag appears whenever power is lost or the unit is caged, not simulated. C. Standby Barometric Altimeter. This instrument has a counter drum which indicates altitude in thousands of feet from 0 to 99. The long pointer indicates altitude in 50-foot increments with one full revolution each thousand feet. A knob and window permit setting the altimeter to the desired barometric pressure setting. Check and set this barometric pressure if needed. D. Standby airspeed indicator. Check. This instrument displays airspeed from 60 to 850 knots indicated airspeed. It operates directly off the pitot system. E. Standby turn and slip indicator. Check. This gauge contains a scale, turn pointer, power warning flag and an inclinometer ball. A two-minute turn is indicated with the needle over the index to the left and right of center. The gyro is driven by an inverter, which is powered from the 28 volts DC essential services bus. An off flag is provided to indicate loss of power, not simulated. F. Angle of attack indexer and indicator. Check. This indicator registers units of AOA to the relative airstream, from 0 to 30 units. The indicator is set with the optimum unit setting at the 3 o'clock position. G. HUD. Check it's off. The HUD is only available in the forward cockpit. It is an electro-optical device that projects flight and weapon delivery information in symbolic form into the pilot field of view on a combining glass. Its on-off knob is located on the data entry panel. H, MFD both should be off. The multifunction displays operate independent of one another. This provides the ability to display the desired information on any MFD. In the navigation master mode, the left MFD is usually used to display the ADI, and the right MFD is used to display the HSI. The switch on their lower right corner powers them on and toggles between day or night brightness ranges. The switch on their lower left corner, turns the MFD off. I, Cabin Pressure Altimeter. Check. The cabin pressure altimeter is located on the left side of the pedestal. This altimeter indicates cabin pressure altitude in 1000 foot increments. NUC, 23. UHF, VHF, COM2 radio. Check it is off. The D45C uses the AN, ARC, 182, UHF, VHF communication system, to provide air-to-air -air and air-to-ground communications. 
The system consists of two receiver transmitters, COM1 and COM2, with their associated controls. Currently, the radios can be used on DCS only through the simple radio standalone multiplayer communication utility. For now, there is no way to contact ADC, AWACS, JTAC nor Carrier ATC. 24. PITO Heat Switch. Confirm it's off. The PITO probe provides air measurements to drive the standby barometric altimeter, airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, and other miscellaneous equipment. To prevent icing of the probe, this switch enables an electric heater when turned on. Use it when the exterior temperature is below 0 degrees Celsius. 25. Hook Bypass Switch. Set as required. This switch tells the aircraft that we intend to land on a carrier or on an airfield, allowing the aircraft to emit warnings of misconfiguration. It is not fully simulated yet. 26. Clock. Set. Not necessary on DCS, as the clock is automatically set to the mission start time. Also, the clock adjustment knobs are not simulated yet. 27. Hook handle. Check that it corresponds to the current hook position. On the real aircraft, the ground crew would tell the pilot what is the current hook position. On DCS you can press F2 to view the aircraft from outside. 28. Communications Control Panel. Set as desired. Currently, only the COM1 and COM2 switches are simulated. On DCS, make sure to toggle those to the up position, in order to use the radios with the SRS communication software. The mic switch is for the intercom with your second crew member. Placing this switch at hot, holds the mic switch open, allowing you to talk without having to keep the PTT button pressed. 29. VOR, ILS. Check it's off. The D-45 equips an AN, ARN, 144 unit, which provides bearing information to ground VOR stations, and ILS localizer and glide slope information. The highlighted knob actually has two controls, a central knob to adjust the left part of the frequency display, and an outside ring with three positions, off, power, and test. Unfortunately, the index mark of the ring can't be seen, so it's hard to see that it is currently already set to off. 30. Tacken. Confirm it's off. The D-45 has an AN, ARN, 136 unit which provides distance and bearing information to ground tack and stations and range information to cooperating aircraft. 31. UHF, VHF COM1 radio. Off. Located on center pedestal, confirm it is set to off. 33. Battery switches. Confirm they are set to off. 224 volt DC batteries provide power for the engine starting system and, following generator failure, for services which are critical for the operation of the aircraft. The batteries are connected to the 28 volt DC essential services bus. 34. AC reset switch. Check it is centered. 115 and 26 volts AC power is provided by two static inverters which are supplied with DC power from the 28 volts DC essential services bus. The inverter protection circuit strip an inverter offline when certain fault conditions are detected. This switch allows manual resetting of the inverters, after a fault has occurred. 35. Generator switch. Set to on. The aircraft has a 9 kW 28 volt DC generator driven by the engine external gearbox. The generator output is supplied to the 28 volt DC bus. This switch control the generator, and has the following positions. Reset. Resets the generator voltage regulator after a fault. On. Connects the generator to the 28 volt DC bus. Off. Turns off the generator. 38. Exterior lights. As desired. The exterior lights consist of a landing taxi light, approach lights, Formation lights, na A. Navigation lights switch. Select flash or steady. The navigation lights consist of a single light in the leading edge of the left and right wingtips, and a single light on the aft end of the tail co. B. Tail light switch. Select bright, off, or dim. C. Wing light switch. Select bright, off, or dim. D. Formation light switch. Select bright, off, or dim.
Amber formation lights are installed in each wingtip. The approach lights unit is located on the nose gear strut. It consists of three separate red, amber, and green lights, controlled automatically by the OA system and function when the landing gear is down and locked in flight. In addition, the approach lights are also controlled by the hook bypass switch in the forward cockpit. Placing the switch to the carrier position causes the lights to flash if the arresting hook is not down. With the switch in field, the lights remain steady regardless of arresting hook position. 40. Interior lights. As desired. They are adjusted on the INTR LD panel, on the right console. MIP knob. Adjusts the intensity of the main instrument panel backlighting. Console knob. Controls the intensity of the backlight on both side consoles. Flood knob. Adjusts the intensity of all secondary lights with the exception of the map lights. 1. Battery switches. A. Set battery 1 and battery 2 to on. This connects both batteries to the 28 volt DC essential services bus. In the event of a generator failure, both batteries can provide electric power to the aircraft during approximately 27 minutes. B. Alternately select each battery off to check individual voltage, 24 to 29 volts. The adjacent DC voltmeter is connected to the 28 volt DC essential services bus. It indicates generator voltage when the generator is on, and battery voltage when the generator is off. The scale of the voltmeter ranges from 21 to 29 volts and is graduated in 2 volt increments. The colored scale is orange from 21 to 24 volts, indicating battery power only, and is green from 24 to 29 volts, indicating generator or external power. C. After checking the voltage, make sure that both batteries are on. 4. Fuel quantity. Check. The internal fuel supply is carried in two tanks, a fuselage tank and an integral wing tank, containing a total of 2,750 pounds of usable fuel. The center section of the wing tank forms a collector tank, the forward part of which is a negative G compartment, containing two boost pumps. The internal tanks are pressurized with engine bleed air to keep the collector tank full until all other fuel is exhausted. The aircraft has no capability to dump fuel. 6. Advisory Panel Lights. Ensure that anti-skid is on. 7. Firelight. Check it is out. When excessive temperature is detected in the engine bay, the fire warning light illuminates, and is followed by a master alert line and warning audio tone. 8. Warning and Caution Panel Lights. Ensure the following are on. Warning. Generator. Oil pressure. Hydraulic fail and oxygen. Caution. Hydraulic pressure. Fuel pump. Canopy. Fuel pressure. Some of these lights are not simulated yet. 10. Hydraulic 1 and 2. Pressure indicators. 0. On the D-45, two hydraulic systems provide pressure for operating the flight controls and general services. The number 1 hydraulic system provides power for flight control surfaces, and general items like flaps, slats, speed brakes, landing gear, nose wheel steering, wheel brakes, arresting hook, and launch bar. The number 2 hydraulic system provides power for flight controls only. Primary flight control actuators are designed so that either of the two main hydraulic systems can provide sufficient power for normal operation. Power for the two independent hydraulic systems is provided by two identical engine-driven pumps. The pumps maintain each system at an operating pressure of 3000 PSI. As the engine is off, currently the hydraulic pressure is zero. 13. Landing gear position indicator lights. On. Check all three. indicator. Check. No off flag visible. 16. Canopy. Close it by clicking on the highlighted handle. The gas turbine starter is a self-contained unit complete with ignition system, fuel pump, fuel control, lubrication system, and ADC starter motor. The GTS provides air to start the engine on the ground and can also be used in flight to assist during an air start.
1. GTS Start Button. Press momentarily to start the GTS. On DCS you can either click the GTS Start Button, on the front side of the throttle lever, or use the right shift plus home keys. Wait until a green GTS advisory light illuminates. This informs that the GTS has attained its idle RPM. Two, engine switch. Move to start. Once the GTS advisory is on, you can right click and hold for a second the engine switch on the start position to begin the engine start. Three, throttle, advance to idle. Once the ready light is on, press the home key or click on the finger lift to advance the throttle to idle. Placing the throttle on the idle position supplies fuel to the engine to allow it to light off. At 45% RPM, the GTS light goes out and it will shut down automatically. At that point, the ignition units are de-energized and the ready light goes off too. The engine continues to accelerate and should stabilize at approximately 55% RPM within approximately 30 seconds of selecting idle. Monitor engine instruments for normal engine start, while engine stabilizes at idle. 4. Voltmeter. Check. To confirm that the generator is online, check that the DC voltage is now on the green band, 25 to 29 volts. 8. Multifunction displays. Set to on. Turn both displays on, clicking on the highlighted buttons. 9. UHF, VHF radios. Set to on, by turning their mode knobs to the transmit receive plus guard monitoring position. Tune their frequencies as needed for the mission. 10. VOR, ILS set as desired. Set to on, by right clicking the outer ring of its left knob. Tune its frequency as needed. 11. Tacket. Power on. Set to on and tune the carrier's frequency. On this mission it's 74 X-ray. 4. Hydraulic 2. Reset button. Press. A bypass hydraulic valve is open to return pump pressure when the engine RPM is below 42% to reduce engine loads during the engine start. Following engine start, the bypass valve is reset by depressing this hydro to reset push button. Check that hydro caution light goes out and hydraulic pressure indicates in normal range. 5. Hydraulic pressures. Check 3000 PSI on both hydro systems. 7. HUD. Adjust brightness. Note that the HUD brightness can only be adjusted when it is on day mode. 8. MFD Adjust Brightness and Contrast Before taxi, select the ADI page on one display, and the engine page on the other MFD. 12A. Pitch Trim. Check both directions. Use the trim hat on the flight stick, and check its full pitch range. 12C. Pitch trim. Set for takeoff or catapult. For short takeoff, 
set pitch trim of 2 to 3 degrees nose up. For carrier launch, set 3.5 degrees nose up. Thirteen. Aileron trim. Check both directions and set it neutral. Fourteen. Rudder trim. Check both directions and set it neutral. Sixteen. Low altitude warning. Set. The low altitude warning consists of a law advisory displayed in the MFD advisory window, an audio warning tone, and flashing of the law setting and accompanied by a HUD warning indication. The low altitude warning is initiated when the aircraft descends to or below the law setting and continues until the aircraft ascends above the law level. Its default value at power on is 500 feet. To set the low altitude warning value, press the law button on the data entry panel. The current law setting will be displayed in each scratch pad with the law identifier, LW. To change it, simply type the new value using the data entry panel keypad. Press the ENT button to enter the new value. Use the CLR button to clear in case of a mistake. Seventeen. Bingo. Set. A bingo advisory is displayed in the MFD advisory windows when the fuel quantity is less than or equal to the bingo setting. The bingo advisory is accompanied by caution being displayed on the HUD and by flashing of the bingo setting and BNGO option legends. On power up, the bingo setting defaults to 900 pounds with a minimum setting of 0 pounds and a maximum of 3000 pounds. To set a new bingo value, press the BNG button on the data entry panel. The current bingo setting will be displayed in each scratch pad preceded by the bingo identifier, BF. The bingo setting can now be entered, in 100 pound increments, using the data entry panel number buttons. Once the setting is entered, pressing the ENT button will store the new setting, update the ADI bingo setting, and remove the scratch pads. 18. ADI display. Compare with standby instruments. Check that the values shown on the ADI, corresponds with the indications of the standby instruments. 21. Navigation source. Select either TACN or waypoints. On the HSI, select either TCN, or WYPT navigation sources. The VOR, ILS source is not implemented yet. 1. Flight controls. Check. Move the control stick left to right and front to back, checking that the control surfaces move accordingly. Move the rudder pedals left and right and confirm that the rudder moves likewise. 2. Nose wheel steering. Engage. On DCS, the nose wheel steering is always engaged. The flight stick and WS button, or S key, is used to select a higher turn rate and must be held while maneuvering on tight places. 3A. Speed brakes. Extend. 3B. Flaps slash slats. Fold down. Use the HODAS or the left control plus F keys. 3C. Tail hook. Down. Click on the cockpit lever, or use the HODAS or the H key. 3D. Launch bar. Extend. Use the HODAS or the right shift plus U keys. 4. Check for the following. Speed brake. Advisory light. On. Speed brake full. Advisory light. On. Flaps half position light. Off. Flaps full position light. On. Quick warning light. On. Goes off within 6 seconds. L bar advisory light. On. At this point, the plane captain would check that everything deployed correctly. 
On DCS you can select external view with F2, and confirm the extended devices. Five A, speed brakes, retract. Five B, flaps, set to half, using the HOTAS or the left shift plus F keys. Five C, tail hook, up, click on the cockpit lever, or use the HOTAS or the H key. Five D launch bar. Retract. Use the hoodies or the right shift plus U keys. 6. Check that all the previous advisory lights have turned off, except the flaps half advisory, which is now on. 7. Congratulations! You have successfully finished this training mission on how to cold start the T-45C, the aircraft is now ready to taxi. On the next mission, we will learn the taxi and carrier launch procedures. Press spacebar to end the mission now.